this one. Because basically, here's the TLDR. So I made a, I worked on a video years ago called How to Get Good at Overwatch. And I had like this idea of like, um, of like this, you know, really fun, like in-depth, like explaining everything that you need to know about getting good at Overwatch, et cetera, et cetera, like how to much to train, how to get better, this and that. And it just turned out to be like a huge pain in the butt to edit. Because I was like not great at editing and like it was just it, anyway, it was just it was just a pain in the butt, right? So I put a lot of time into it and I got to the end, I was like, dude, this last little bit of editing, I just don't have time. Like I was really busy coaching at the time and like I just I just wasn't gonna have time to make it work. So basically what I did is I released it like 90% of the way done and kind of like TLDR'd the stuff at the end. And what I want to do is go through it again and not so much hammer time it, um, in other words, critique my own content, so much as basically fill you guys in and answer any questions you guys have along the way. So it's only an 11 minute video, it's not too long. And there's like some funny things along, at least I try to be funny along the way. But I'm gonna try and like help you guys. Like this is, when I say get good at Overwatch, I mean like this is your typical plat monkey, silver bot, you know, diamond, like me, whatever, everything. So we're gonna like get to watch it and I'm gonna pause it through at intervals and explain slash answer questions about it, okay? So. You play Overwatch. You play Overwatch competitively. You're bronze, silver, gold, or maybe higher. You practice. You read. You watch. But nothing. And, and yes, I put XQC rage compilations on level with your Overwatch in terms of educational content. <laughs> Changes. Every comp Holy game, crap, there's crazy. something. Incompetent Wait, teams. Wait, you by yourself, dude. May? Okay. Wait, come back, come back, come back. All right, we gotta, we gotta regroup. We gotta regroup. We can't push into this. We're down one. Let's go to send. Toxicity. Heal me! I'm so Damage I can't boost me. Uh, can we get into support, maybe? Maybe another healer? Because, you know, we only have the Ana. What are you disabled? You don't need more support. Oh, what the f? Why do you shield the ball? Guys, we really don't want to be outside this spawn. Don't think it's a good idea. We don't want to be outside this spawn. Can we come back? Ana, I'll, I'll, pull, I'll kill for you. Run, run Ana. Oh, shit. No, 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 no. Come on! What the hell? You was over the whole time. I was pulling it out. I know. I don't. We are too far forward. We need to go back. Heal me. Heal me. I'm dead. I can't heal you. The grave. You need to kill something for one. Those were old Lord of the Rings online buddies of mine. We had a good time recording that. <laughs> Game has gone from a fun challenge to a chore. You shed tears of frustration. Why can't I improve? There's an answer. This video is the answer. This video isn't here to tell you tips and tricks, but to show you how you can educate yourself to overcome adversity. This is four steps to get good at Overwatch. I forgot there was only four steps. First, technical requirements. There are many videos on this already, so I won't go in detail on this specific topic. However, I will mention the basics. Number one, 60 frames per second. IOSX has an excellent video on this, which helps you to optimize your Overwatch settings to increase your frames per <clears> second. This is the sim setting video. I still use that video as like a baseline. If anybody has any updated, like this is a really, really good video released recently for like new Overwatch settings. But for me, the sim setting works really good for like maximizing FPS. And so I generally follow it. I think it's linked in the description of this video. So I will link that one in the description. Secondly, mouse pad that is at least 200 centimeters square. The larger, the better. The reason for this is, is because a bigger mouse pad usually means more precision when you're moving your arm to aim your mouse. 
lastly, it just allows you to use a, a lower sensitivity without like running out of space. Like obviously, I know there's some people that aren't don't have a lot of space, but like if you can get a bigger space, get a bigger space. I don't care if you're a tank player, DPS player, hit scan, Moira player, get more space. It allows you to be more precise. It allows you more space. Um, I picked 200 centimeters square. It was just arbitrary. It was like a medium sized mouse pet. Anything obviously bigger is better, but you know. I recommend. Well, bigger mouse pad leads to usually means lower. Well, yeah. Anyway, I talk about it here. An effective DPI under 8,000. Effective DPI is calculated by multiplying your DPI on your mouse. By the way, this is my brother actually like produced this song. It's just like my brother, he's gotten a lot better since then. So it's pretty, it's kind of basic now, but like back then this was, yeah, anyway. By the sensitivity in game on Overwatch. The reason why you want an EDPI of under 8,000 is anything over that usually means it's a very high sensitivity, which means precision, especially with aim heavy heroes, can be very, very difficult. Again, I'm going to recommend an IO6 video which uses the PSA method, a precise and mathematical formula which allows over the time of about an hour you to decide exactly what sensitivity is right for you. It's an okay video. The funny thing about the PSA method is it's like really, really mathematically complicated. It's just a way of eventually finding what sensitivity feels more comfortable. Um, but it's it's like ridiculously complicated when really it doesn't really matter. Just pick something and roll with it. Our next focus. Yeah, is my good. brother produces music professionally. To be on player it's attitude. There's a couple things that we need to throw out and absolutely. My one of my brothers is a professional musician. The other one is um, I used to sing in a band and I used to be a, a play guitar in a band. And then my other brother is a professional music producer. Or, or semi-professional he's not professional yet from your mindset the first one is concerning yourself with what your teammates are doing and or blaming your teammates now i see a lot of focus put on especially in lower tiers on trying to get teammates into voice chat trying to coordinate ultimates trying to assist your teammates with positioning trying to uh coordinate yourself with your teammates and while there's nothing wrong with practicing that when you set an expectation for your teammates and then your teammates do not live up to that expectation you're setting yourself up for frustration and failure really quick chat just to reiterate so there's not every section is going to rely me to like explain it again so but if you have any questions about anything that i'm saying please let me know in vod or out of vod like at spilo and i will answer if you wish to coordinate if you wish to work together, but you have no expectations that your teammates will actually follow through on what you expect from them, then that's okay. But that's often a lot more difficult than it seems. What my recommendation is to only concern yourself with what you are doing to limit your mistakes and to make sure that you're fulfilling your role and removing any error from your gameplay. A feeling of personal responsibility not only gives you control over the situation, but it means <laughs> get it, get it. I suck at this game. <laughs> in these games, you can identify the problems that you made and not focus on your teammates. Too often, when we set expectations on others and others fail to live up to those expectations, it can lead to tilt and frustration and a feeling of what is best described as elo hell. As in, I told them what to do, I tried to get them to do what they need to do, and they did not live up to those expectations. Remember, it is your job to improve, your job to climb, and if you set your expectations and focus on yourself, you will improve much faster. So actually, I actually want to elaborate on that one a little bit. I think the really important thing about communication is that, or the pitfall, is that it sets expectations. If I say, Genji, I'm going to nana you for blade or whatever, like I expect Genji to act in a way that deserves a blade, right? If I say, guys, I've slept Wrecking Ball in the back line, I expect peel. Um, if I say, I'm going to buy Attic Nade them, I expect follow-up. If I say, I'm going to EMP them, I expect people to be like, but the problem is, is when that doesn't happen, we're human, so we don't immediately go, oh, it's okay, no big deal, guys, go next. You know, we get mad. We get like, come on, guys, what was going on? Like, why aren't you doing what I think you should be doing, right? Ryan, why aren't you pushing? I wanna go, like, right? And what that means is, yeah, you'll more likely be in sync with your team more often because you are communicating with them. Um, at least for me, I get frustrated and then I get tilted and then I lose motivation to play slash lose focus and I start playing or training worse. So a lot of times when I leave voice chat, yes, the synergy isn't there, but I know it's not gonna be there anyway. So I just focus on my own gameplay and I find ways of just, just I just focus on my training. Like I almost always without exception, find communication below like masters to be a distraction. Like it, it, I found like I literally the other day, and this is obviously this is anecdotal, but like just the other day, I like, I was playing a little bit of rank like last week and I went like 0 and 4 in voice chat. I left voice chat and I went eight and one. 
And it's just like, I just, I don't like, like, unless there's a really, like, um, it's not even like, oh, I need somebody to be hard comic. Sometimes it's even worse. Like, I just want to focus on my play and focus on, like, what I see and what I hear. Like, what's this guy doing? And I don't want people calling random crap. Because a lot of times in lower ranks, it's not just the fact that people don't know how to communicate or coordinate. They, they just, they just do a, they do a negative job. It's not just neutral. It's negative. It's harmful and distracting. So... Sometimes it's just better to focus on like what's directly in front of you and like focus like 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 as a deep as a tank player focus more on like when your DPS are ready to push and and less on relying on them telling you when they're ready to push. You know what I'm saying? If you're DPS somber, if you're a somber player, don't tell your team when you're EMPing. Look to see if they can follow up on your EMP. And that's why for me communication like I mean I on I, I when I was playing seriously like two years ago I climbed from Diamond to GM on Zen and Ana. With no comms like i had to kill flankers by myself a lot of times you know what i'm saying but yeah that, that that's my opinion i know that's unpopular opinion for a lot of folks but like yeah secondly concerning yourself with winning and concerning yourself with your sr because a lot of the time when we start to focus on the number that is our rank we get distraught when we start to lose we get overinflated when we start to win SR is just an approximation, and it can usually be placed with 250, 300, or even 400 SR of usually where you're actually at. When you start to focus on whether you're winning games and what number is on your screen, then you're taking the focus off of where it should be, that is your personal performance. It's very easy to go in win streaks and not be playing well yourself. It's very easy to go in loss streaks and be playing well yourself. However, if we stop looking at whether we're winning, whether we're losing, and focusing on am I improving at the areas of which I'm trying to improve at? Is my aim better? Is my positioning better? Am I using my ultimates better? Okay. Am I using my abilities properly? When you put focus on individual aspects of your gameplay like that, rather than games won or lost, you'll find the game to be a lot more satisfying and you'll find the path improvement much smoother. Lastly, stop. Yeah, so the big thing is like, again, it's not just about the voice chat anymore. It's like, you are like the goal, the, 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 like you have to think of like, and this is just like learning in general, like put your focus on what you can actually control because when you improve at those aspects, the winning is a side product of doing the right thing. Like that's just like, that's like a trope that's repeated a lot in sports and esports. And it's like you winning is a result of doing the right thing. So you don't focus on winning, you focus on doing the right thing. Um, your motivation should be so much that like, I want like your motivation should be, I, I'm gonna do anything it takes to improve my position. Like when I coach you guys, when I VOD review you guys, um, and, for, and for those of you who, who I haven't VOD reviewed, who are just here, my cat, I swear. Um, who are just in here for like watching and learning, like when you can take that those concepts and apply it to your own gameplay, it shouldn't just be, oh, that was good to know. All right, I'll work on that. It should be like, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to do that. I'm literally gonna position perfectly this entire game. I'm gonna make no mistakes. Like your goal shouldn't just be to get better. It should be to, should be to be perfect with your ultimate usage, with your nade usage, with your you know your your shield management, whatever. Like you need you need to not stop being a sissy. You need to be perfect. And you're not going to be, but there needs to be like that level of focus and effort at whatever you're trying to improve on. Don't just watch my VOD on Torb Turret Place and be like, oh, that's good. Next time I, you know, I'm a Torb main, I'll, I'll take note of that. No, no, go into your game and get, okay, I learned that. I'm going to literally be perfect at it, this game. And you're not going to be, and it's going to be hard, but that should be your goal, that you're not satisfied until you're perfect with your turret placement. And when you're almost perfect, then you need to find what's next on the, uh, the agenda. Eloquan, I have a bad, have a losing motivation. I put work to VOD review and get good, but I'm in hard sec plat for a few seasons, and I know some people can get a lot more cash with the same rank. Makes you feel like a failing event quickly. Well, here's the thing, Alec Juan, is it's like part of it could be like like I would watch this video all the way through and like self be honest with yourself, like because I go I'm not quite done with everything just yet, but like you know, are you playing consistently? Do you have a hero pool? What's your what's your sensitivity like? What's your attitude like? Because if other players are improving faster than you. It's not because they're necessarily smarter. They're just probably training smarter than you are. And you need to figure out what's wrong with your training. If you're losing motivation because it feels like you're not getting better, then it's probably because your training is not good enough or you're not consistent enough. Like there's, there's always going to be that hump of where you put time in and you don't instantly see results. Like there's a very, very famous um, weight loss issue that everybody that first gets started with fat loss, the all, when you start working out, you almost always gain weight for the first couple of weeks. Almost always, without exception. Because you gain muscle slash uh, glycogen, like water weight. That's just how the body works. It needs extra energy, like whatever, muscle, whatever. So 
there's always that going to be that initial hump of where like you don't see the results initially. You're like, what? I'm looking to lose weight, but I'm gaining weight. Like I'm getting worse. Like what? But if you're consistent with it, and you stick why, past it, and you push through it, and you're still not getting better. Like not again, not rank, but like you're like like looking at your gameplay, and I'm still making the same mistakes over and over again. Then there's something wrong with your mental, and there's something wrong with your focus. And the reason why I, I I treat this as like worth worthy of attention is because I think for people that go into Overwatch and they can't improve and they can't get better and they're just wasting time, those are almost without exception people that have the same issues in real life too. Right. So you've only done it about a month ago, but like, how has your training been during that month? Has it been consistent? Has it been like constant? Has it been good quality focused training? Have you skipped days unnecessarily? A lot of time it's trying to do too much. Yeah. Yeah. Consistent as in time. Sure. Like consistent. You're right. Consistent is a broad term, but you tell me. Okay. Is it all ranked slash warm up? Are you consistent with your hero pools? Are you consistent with like, or do you have stuff that you're actively working on? Not just playing the game. Because you can play the game for 2.5 hours a day and you'll get better for sure. But you're, but you're going to get better like gimped. You're not going to get better as fast as you should be. Every day starts with a VOD review. Okay. How long do you VOD review and what goals do you give yourself? Sorry, chat, but I think this is important. I think this is just as educational as finishing the VOD. We'll finish the video. 30 minutes for VOD review, two or three hero pool, okay. Do your goals change day to day at all? They change every two days, okay. So chat, you can read all of Alaquan's message. Are there any armchair psychologists that want to tell me what's wrong with Alaquan, not mentally, but with training. Here's your exercise chat, work on your coaching skills. What's the problem? I see two problems already. Posture check. Thank you. Hydrate. Thank you. So Aliquan, first off, not enough time to thoroughly work on a goal. Exactly. Like I'm talking, you should give yourself a week, man, at least to work at stuff. That's way too much adjustment of you, two day, one every two days, man. No freaking way. Nobody can get better at something in two days, man. Not unless you're playing like 10 hours a day, one tricking. In addition, I think VOD reviewing every day is bad. You should be VOD reviewing like once, like me, like you guys saw what I was doing when I was playing ranked. I would like look for like five minutes at like a team fight, especially when you already know, like, here's the thing. The reason my VOD reviews on stream are long is because I'm setting the stage for what should be happening for the next month for you with VOD reviews. In other words, I'm literally, I'm not just coaching you, I'm investigating. I don't know what you need to work on. So I'm, I'm sitting there trying to figure out what you need to work on. But once you already know what you need to work on, you no longer need to be VOD reviewing for long. You already know what you need to work on. So all you do is you're doing an assessment at that point. And doing that every single day, or like certainly for 30 minutes every single day is just a waste. At that point, you're just, you're, you should just be checking your gameplay and replays between you know games for like a team fight or two. Well, here's the thing, Alaquan. Every single VOD will have a different major problem, right? Like we saw with the Torbjorn, how his overload, like his 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 turret placement, mattered more in certain sections, but it mattered less in others. You're right. Different. Every VOD is going to have a priority problem. But remember, your job is not to ascertain the problem. Your job is to ascertain the pro or to decide what the problem is and hammer at it until it goes away. So for example, like, let's say you're playing Winston and you're like your primal, like when you're, when you're using your primal is bad. It doesn't matter if that, if, if the next couple of 
uh, games you play, it's not as much of a factor. But if it's a factor at all, then that's what you want to be looking at. Like what you're describing to me is like, if you are like, like it, it's basically like you, the problem doesn't go away until you actually build it from knowledge into skill. And it won't do that until you put sufficient time into it. You cannot leapfrog from problem to problem to problem to problem to problem until the initial problem is actually fixed. The lack of problem, the problem promise, lack of sustained focus. Yes, yes. And you're burning yourself out because you're vodering for 30 minutes every day on something that never gets better because you never give it ample time to improve. You might pl be playing Zen and working on positioning and you might, have, you might have a game where you literally trance wrong every single time and you lose the game because you scuffed up your trance three times in a row. But it is going to be your challenge to ignore the trance usage and focus on the positioning because that's what you have decided you want to work on. Now, if your trans usage across the board is really bad for every game, then maybe that needs to be prioritized over a positioning, but that's for you to decide. So you're talking about Doomfist, I assume. Okay, if what the goal should be for you, Aliquan, to see not just on a game to game improvement, but to see a macro improvement over the course of about a week before you decide to move on. In other words, if you go three cooldowns in a couple times in one game, but don't do it in the next, that's not progress. Progress is if you do three cooldowns a game and then you don't do it for a week or you do it significantly less for a week. Hey, Neo. Because even a broken clock is right twice a day. You might get lucky and just, hey, I just happen to you know, be smart here, but then I scuffed it up and that doesn't, the problem's not fixed. It's like a cancer patient waking up one day during chemo and saying, hey, I feel pretty good. You know, you don't go home. Is the cancer there or is it not? You know what I'm saying? So I, I want you to, if, you, if, you, if listen, if you have three cooldowns in, three, like, but, and, and you're trying to fix that, and you have one game where you don't do that, pat yourself in the back. Nice job, man. I did a really good job. Now let's do that again next game. Can you replicate it? What about the game after that? Or the game after that? Or the game after that? Or the game after that? If you're playing 2.5 hours a day, that's probably like, you're probably going to get in a good close to 30 games a week, right? Oh, no, I encourage you to rewatch games. If you're in queue, go over it. But don't look at your ultimate usage. Don't look at your positioning. Look at your cooldowns. Okay, I didn't do it there. Skip the next fight. Okay, didn't do it there. Skip the next fight. Okay, didn't do it there. Skip the next fight. You see what I'm saying? And don't, start looking at other stuff focus on that and when you're in uh, the other thing is when you're in a game again you should you should you should you should feel like i'm going to be hit i'm some, like like someone's going to drop a hammer on me if i if i make a mistake with my triple cooldowns if i go in with three cooldowns again man i'm going to smack myself across the face don't do that please but like you get the idea like you should take it seriously like it shouldn't just be something i'm working on but it it needs to be done it needs to never happen again don't do it anymore you hear me aliquan no more triple cooldown engages you go one two if you're gonna go in three you better have your you better darn well have your ultimate or have full support if you do it again i'm gonna drive across the united states to wherever you live i'm gonna hammer on your house i'm gonna take a big fat cream pie and smash it in your fat ugly face uninstall your computer call your mother and tell you how much of a disappointment you are don't do it again If you can't find any mistakes, then you need to practice your VOD reviewing skills. Remember, your job is to be like, could I have engaged better? Could I have used my cooldowns better? Could I have used my ultimate better? Was my timing correct? Was my positioning correct? Was my cooldown usage correct? You need to ask yourself, if not just did I did I make any mistakes, but could I have, could I have done it better? Is there a better target? Is there a better location I could have engaged from? And that goes for every hero, not just Doomfist. Can I, could I have done something better this fight with positioning, with cooldown usage, with timing? Positioning, cool usage, timing. Could I have done better? Hear me, chat? Ba it baggins optimally, yeah. O optimally, you're in game, like keeping yourself focused on, like, if you screw up, ah, oh, shoot, I can't do that again. All right, next fight. I'm not going to do it this next fight. If you screw up in game and you triple cooldown in, your goal should be next fight. I definitely don't do it. That, that's the goal. Mm hmm. Okay. Treating comp like it's special. Competitive.
Other than games won or lost, you'll find the game to be a lot more satisfying and you'll find the path improvement much smoother. <sighs> Lastly, stop treating comp like it's special. Competitive is just a training ground. It may seem stressful, it may seem high energy, but in the end, it's just there for you to practice. If you struggle with competitive anxiety, just remember that in the end, the winning or losing doesn't matter. It's just about you practicing to get better. So if you're struggling with competitive anxiety, just continue to grind and tell yourself that, listen, it doesn't matter if I win or lose. Not Nobody's going to be stuck way. in this ring because of my poor performance. Nobody's going to climb because of my fantastic performance. I'm just here to work on my personal struggles. And, that, and that's true, too. Like, if you throw somebody's game because you're absolutely trash can, you have to understand that that guy is probably going to be playing, like, if they play a lot, they're going to be playing hundreds of games this season. You have had less than 1% impact on how their season is going. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I recommend everybody to start in voice chat, but the second the voice chat or coordinating with your teams becomes more of a distraction and or if the voice chat becomes toxic and rude, that's when you leave voice chat and continue to focus on personal performance. Chat, give me a second. I'm actually going to move my laptop because my cat is desperately wanting to sit in my lap. And so she has to have a path that involves a walking over my laptop, which I don't want her to do. So I'm going <laughs> to turn on the chat on my phone. Hey, kitty. One second. Ah! Okay, we're good. Is it hammer time? I mean, kind of, <laughs> kind of. Um, I I'll say here that like with the whole voice chat thing, I think my opinion is voice chat is dropped even lower than when I initially made this video. I, I say there's a lot of circumstances where it's okay to not even start in voice chat. Um, if you're like somebody who gets distracted easily by like toxicity or just people being morons like me, then like, don't bother. But I, I, I wouldn't say the reason why I didn't put it in here is because it, I don't want to paint everybody with a broad brush. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't mind as much. Come here. There's Come nothing here. wrong talking with teammates. There's nothing wrong coordinating with teammates. There's nothing wrong with the teamwork that is associated with voice chat. But the second it becomes a hindrance rather than an assistance, that's when it needs to be left behind. Let's talk about so this is important training schedule. Repetition and consistency are key for improving at Overwatch. It is better to build a training schedule that you can consistently stick to every day than to skip a day and grind Overwatch for six hours. Please, so many people do this. Please, please live and learn. Do, this is the big, big issue. You see this? Oh, five, three, four, five, zero, zero, twenty-six. You know what I'm saying? Like, do not do this. Do not, do not, do not. You'll get better, but it is so inefficient. It's a good way to burn yourself out as well. Six hours the next. Warm-up is what we use to prepare our mindset and our mechanics. Free-for-all deathmatch is unquestionably the best warm-up tool. Tryhard FFA custom games are even better if available. Deathmatch allows you to practice your mechanics on realistically moving targets and in an environment where encounters happen rapidly without lengthy spawn timers. I recommend spending 15 to 20 minutes in free-for-all at the start of each training session. Now you're ready for comp. Remember what we said earlier. Competitive Keep mode in mind that some tank heroes like Winston and Reinhardt don't require as much warm-up. Mode is just a practice mode, and practice is something that takes time. Because of this, what is 1v1 arena? Expect to spend the majority of your time in Overwatch playing competitive, if your goal is improvement. Those looking to casually improve should aim for 3-4 to four comp games a day, while those serious about improvement should play no fewer than 8 10 or more is off now keep in mind this is pretty grueling like you this is this is like for if you're like looking to climb out a plat you do not need to do 8 to 12 um i would recommend five six somewhere around those and if you do three to four you will get better but it's just gonna take more time uh oh yeah it's not great I think if you have the option, try hard or arcade. Or try hard is way better, honestly, because it's like you, like you said, like I, what I was said, like you don't play this hero. It's like why do you care? Because like Gavin, yeah, every hero has a different aim signature. So how important is do you think is a 144 hertz monitor and a hero like Sin? I think it's important. Like if you can, if you, I got a 144 hertz monitor and I noticed a slight difference, it wasn't anything major at all. Um, but it's it's helpful. But it will, it's definitely not like super super priority. Demol. Before you start to grind in comp, there's something we need to clarify. Flexing is for fools. 
With all seriousness, it's important to realize that flexing the fill for your team's needs is a legitimate strategy to climb. It's just not the most effective way to master heroes and is not the most efficient way to climb. Perfect team compositions usually have a much smaller contribution to wins and losses in games than- Dude, I have that shirt. What the heck? I don't even- like, I, I posted this and I somehow- I some, like, I got it for my brother-in-law. Like, yeah, anyway. Think, at least in tiers up until Masters. So focusing on your performance on your hero is more important than trying to build the perfect composition with a hero you don't even play. I recommend following the 3 2 1 rule for those <laughs> position with a hero you don't even play. I recommend following Torp the Hammer. 3 two If it, life is it isn't a race but there are losers. That this was something so like back when I used to coach fitness classes um I basically like used to coach kickboxing like women's health fitness classes and one of the ladies, uh, she did some knitting or whatever. She wasn't like old, but she did knitting. And she knitted one of the things, this, I, I said this during a uh, class. I was like, come on guys, come on guys, listen, it isn't a race, but there are losers, you know? And they thought it was funny. And so she did it for me and framed it. <laughs> Two, one rule. And hey, stuffed turtle. For those most serious about improvement. Three heroes, two roles, one aiming style. Three heroes might seem restrictive, but it ensures that players are able to master the heroes they play in comp. Expanding the pool to four or five heroes is acceptable, but will make improvements slower as a whole. Two roles ensures that you have some flexibility with what you could provide to your team in comp without stretching yourself out too thin. <laughs> One aiming style helps you to keep your muscle memory consistent. Flicking, the aiming style of Widowmaker oh, McCree. Tracking, the aiming style of Tracer and Zarya. And projectile, the aiming style of Genji and Zenyatta, are examples of different aiming styles. So once more, in case you just missed it, <laughs> dial. Green. Tracking, the aiming style of Tracer and Zarya, and projectile, the aiming style of Genji and Zenyatta, are examples of this. different aiming styles. Okay, so weekly self odd review. Most I said weekly, not daily. Like you could probably do it more, and especially with the, this is by the way, this was before replays were a thing. So like there's, it's a lot easier to self auto review. So you can do it like bi-weekly, tri-weekly while you're waiting in queue. Just don't spend a lot of time on it. And like, cause again, it's not like VOD review should be like every like three or four weeks. Make, you should like really take the time, you know, send me money. Uh, let me roast your gameplay for an hour or you go over your gameplay for an hour or whatever. You really take some extra time, put extra effort into it to kind of figure out like what your goals need to be. And then after that, the VOD reviews are essentially just checkups and you don't need me. You don't need an hour to do that. It's like just short little sessions. Uh, and you should already know what to be looking for, right? You shouldn't like, okay, what did I need to do better here? But more along the lines of like, I wanted to improve at this. Did I get better at this? Am I focused on this? And not so much, did I get better, but am I focusing on it enough? And then like, okay, that situation, I could have positioned here, et cetera. Um, Checking yourself from external sources, YouTube VOD reviews. Basically my TLDR with external sources is like, it's good. So like, I'm I like, I'm flattered that you guys watch my stream, but if I stream like 10 hours a day, people in here that we should not watch my stream for 10 hours a day, you know? Like I'm here for entertainment as well, to give you another motivation to do, to do this, but like, like, I know a lot of people that just sit and watch, like, you know, freaking Kabaji or ML7, like, four hours a day. And, like, that's just so inefficient, man. Like, if you're really serious about getting better, like, you'll pick up a couple of tips and tricks, but ultimately, knowledge doesn't translate the skill. Um, and honestly, watching streamers is not even a very fast way of getting knowledge either. But I definitely think external sources are good. They really helped me. Um, they will help you. But, like, with, with balance. If you're in here, like, like or if you're in any stream for, like, four or five hours a day, like, that's, that should definitely partially just be because you enjoy the stream, not because you're trying to learn something or trying to like get better at Overwatch. Like you'll learn something with, yeah. This why I was actually 17. I mean, all right. Ah! Exit screen. All right, chat. I actually need to, I need to fix my scene. I need to fix my scene because otherwise like I'm gonna be shrunk forever. Like the Wicked Witch of the, the uh, West. All right, do you chat. Any additional questions about that? Saw an R lose it thread the other day where the person said, you can't expect to compete in a sprint when you sign up for a marathon. And that totally stuck with me. True, true. Uh, I have a hero pool of five heroes, but I work in two or three at a time. Is that fine if I want to get gym? I mean, it's not optimal. Like, what's your hero pool? If you mind me challenging, because a lot of it, because keep in mind that like hero pools can be broader if they fit. Like, for example, 
if you play Hanzo, Genji, Farah, uh, Echo, I mean, you could you could probably realistically squeeze a lot of those heroes out because a lot of those heroes are, you know, the projectile, they all, like, take angles, they all um, have, like, that aggressive, like, play style, and they all also, um, they all also uh, have very, very strong signatures. In other words, you might not be the best Hans in the world, but you can still climb because you play Hans and maps are really good. So, like, that's one advantage of a hot, bigger hero pool is you can play heroes that are really good on certain maps. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody, like, for example, nobody really mains Torb in, like, pro level, but everybody can kind of play Torb because when you play Torb, he's really strong. You know what I'm saying? If the enemy team is playing, like, a bunch of flankers and, and, you, and you don't want to play flankers, you play Torb and it's just instant value. You know what I'm saying? As long as you have, like, decent aim and decent game sense. So you can have like a higher hero pool if it's like Widow McCree, Ash, Tracer, some Sombra. I mean, yeah, so that's that's see that's mostly that's that's not bad because Widow McCree, Ash all have similar playstyles, like not completely, but they're all hit scan. They all have relatively similar playstyles and they all have relatively similar aim styles. Now, Tracer and Sombra are going to be the outliers. Those are those are like pretty different in playstyle, and even though they're hit scan technically, even their aiming style is different. So you'll notice like even in Overwatch League that like a lot of great Tracer players aren't great Widows and vice versa. So Widow McCree, Ash fine hero pool throwing in tracer occasionally somber occasionally is fine but you are going to notice that it's going to be a little trickier uh how does this learning thing work for coaches then i mean for coaches it's like a different skill set because you have to have the knowledge but also you have to have better people skills so like my 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 um my challenge is coaching is like communication personal skills leadership skills and then the ability to like explain things simply which is like partially communication you know what i'm saying like i put a lot of effort on stream to try and communicate things in a way that makes sense or that way that's and that's not overly complicated or overly nitpicky i try to be funny and whatever but like it should i try to make things like as straight cut the crap straight to the point you know what i'm saying i don't sit there hours and hours talking about matchups and cooldown usage i just talk about like this is what they're supposed to do you're not doing it you're you're, you're feeding right um and that's like that's what i have i mean that's taken me years to work on as a coach and not just on stream obviously like when i was team coaching as well i mean i've kind of always been like this so like i've always tried to whenever i was i was coaching i would always be like no nonsense roasts you know angry half angry joking like even when i was working with kids like i work with like four and five year olds and if you get like if you hit the right if you do it right kids think that kind of stuff is hilarious and you keep their attention a lot like i would holler at four year olds be like man what are you guys doing you bunch of goof like what are you goofing off here and then, you know i'd like slip and fall and they all die laughing you know and you know, I'd be like, all right, and we got to focus up. Like, are you going to do it? No, you know, whatever. Anyway, kids kids like that kind of stuff as well. And that's kind of always been my style. Um, yeah, exactly, Uchu. Or Utuj. Your hero pool is scattershot Hanzo. <laughs> is one tricking good for progress? Yeah, it's good for progress. I mean, it depends on the hero, though. Like, I don't recommend one tricking. I recommend, like, two tricking, because two or three tricking means that you have a hero pool that, like, you can fill around the map or the composition that you need. For another, In other words... I play on and Zen and mostly just on and Zen when I occasionally play ranked. And that gives me opportunities like, hey, we're playing a brawler style composition. I can go Ana. We have a Lucio one trick. I can go Ana. You know, uh, we're playing spam. Okay, I can go Zen. We're playing like dive and I've got a brick. I can go Zen. So like it gives me thing. It's like one tricking is good, but like it's almost too far on the opposite side of the spectrum. The only time one tricking actually works well is if a hero is really, really meta or really strong. So like you could one trick Echo in most circumstances, at least back in the, not, I don't know anymore, but like, you can one trick Echo like a couple months ago, and she was just so strong. That, like, there's nothing that Echo would be bad in. So yeah, you can one trick for sure. But it, it just depends on the situation, and, and I'm not saying don't. It just it's gonna be a lot harder, because like you said, there are gonna be situations where you play Echo and it just doesn't feel good, and you're gonna wish you had another projectile hero in your back pocket. <laughs> yeah, when I say main four main tanks, should uh yeah so main so this is why main tank is really really hard is because main tank is like one of the anomalies where like even off tanks have more in common with each other than main tanks do because like off tanks have commonalities in terms of how they play like they they hold space like they hold angles and they they, they enable their main tank um every off tank does that like even hog is like you know angle control enabling pressure whatever but main tanks, they all create space, but they all create space in wildly different ways. Like Diva uses more mobility, Sigma uses more range, Hog uses more flings, Zarya is generally closer to core, but she can still create angles. But they all kind of position similarly, like just some more egregious than others. Main tanks just do it completely different. So with main tank, 
uh, depending on your rank, like if you're if you're like a scrimming and you're like contenders or tier three, you have to play all four main things. You just have to because at that level, playing the meta composition is just that much more important. You don't have to, but it's a lot more important. But if you're like plat, diamond, gold, I would not play all four main things. Definitely not. I would start with like two or maybe three and focus on those because like I said, their, their aim styles, the, the movement positioning, it's, it's, there's, there are similarities, but uh, it's, it's rough. So I would, focus on, I would focus on shrinking your hero pool, especially early on with main tank. How's Mercy's in Brig? It's super weird. That's weird. Like there's very little carryover between those heroes. Like Mercy Brig um, are definitely similar in some aspects because they enable DPS and they enable angles. Um, and Zen can be similar because he's similar in that way as well with like Harmony Orb. But like obviously you're talking about two heroes that have lower mechanical requirements and then a hero that has a very high mechanical requirement. So that's that's weird. It could be worse though. Your primary support main with Mercy Ana is your main applicable DPS. I think my main pool is on five. Is that too broad spread? I mean, here's the thing though, chat. Like I have to disclaimer all this. If you're, I'm, I'm strictly speaking in relation to like serious improvement. You know what I'm saying? Like when I, when I play the game in quick play, I oftentimes I'm just playing like Roadhog. You know what I'm saying? I'm queuing up on flex and I just don't care what I play. You know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty mediocre at everything, you know, except for Ana's end. But that's because I just don't care about improving right now. I already hit my goal. I'm focused on just playing the game for fun. Most of you, well, not most of you, but a lot of you guys in chat are probably in that very same level. So you're talking about like, oh, I play DPS, I play this and that. Well, that's fine. Like nobody cares. Like you'll probably be okay at all those heroes and do fine enough. And if that's what's fun for you, then fine. Though I'm only talking about people that are like, I want to climb out of X rank. I want to improve at the game and be really good. Then that's when you have to start thinking about that. You know what I'm saying? But like, you have to actually ask yourself if that's what you want to do. There's nothing to be ashamed. There's nothing to be, like, there's nothing to be embarrassed or ashamed about, about not being good at the game. It's just a game, man. It's like not being good at shooting a basketball or not being good at, you know, backgammon or not being a good cook. Like it takes work to be good at stuff. So if you're not really, if you don't really want to put in the work, that's totally fine. It's not like you're not, it's not like you're like, like wildly out of shape or lazy. It just means that you don't want to be good at that. So if it is your goal, then yes, it's too, that's, that's too, too, that's a problem. Mercy on a plus a couple DPS, especially depending on the DPS. Probably too big. I, I, I mean, I like roll one tricking. In other words, I don't like people that play support and tank and try and improve it both because their mindset's completely different, but you can do it. Tracer, Widow, Ash. Um, so if, if I were you, honestly, I would, if I, if I were you, I'd drop Mercy. You could you could improve with Tracer Widow Ash Ana. It wouldn't be great, but you would I would drop Mercy. Play Ana. Play Aim Heroes. But also but also you have to Yeah, I, I know you played Mercy with me the other night. But honestly, just also pick like what you enjoy too. Cause like a lot of hero pool construction comes from what's having fun. So like you have to find a balance. So like I don't play a lot of BAP, even though that's the technical flex support hero pool, because I just don't have fun playing BAP. But for you, maybe you like really like playing Mercy, like Mercy is your favorite hero, so maybe you drop Ana instead. But I'm just trying to tell you like what makes the most sense strategically, so you find a balance. I know it's been your main, but you could you can play Aim Heroes. Genji Hanzo Tracer, weird hero pull, but it'd work. At the pro level, at the pro level flex DPS player, everybody kind of has to play Tracer, but like, yeah. Is playing Tracer, Ash, Kree, and Summer at the same time too much? Masters. Um, for Masters, probably, yeah. You don't need to pick up Sombra. Um, I mean, maybe if she becomes... If Sombra becomes meta, sure, pick her up. But I would... I, I think it's a little high for Masters. It's not really necessary. When I do play with my teammates, punch things for going on fights. Uh, when do... Well, you tell me, Alequan. You tell me. Your goal is to, is before you ask me a question, Alequan, actually put that in Ask Spilo. Put that in Ask Spilo. Think about it and then put it in Ask Spilo and then I'll update Ask Spilo with the video once I upload it if you're not in stream and you'll catch it. Is your advice wrong, Spilo? Uh, sorry, and Diva Summer? Yeah, sure. I mean, you're, you're absorbing damage. Yeah, sure. Enabling your main tank. Sure. Taking ang soft angles. Sure. Aiming, you know, your, your hit scan with both of them. Tracking heroes. Yeah. What's a good hero pool to go with Brig? Like, I think Mercy is pretty good with Brig. Mercy Brig is pretty decent. Mercy Brig. Um, 
Lucio is a tricky one. But if you can if you can pick up one mechanical hero, picking up Lucio would be really, really good. Used to be terrible. Yeah, I mean everybody used to be terrible. So I'm having to look down. I'm gonna have to look up. Um, actually, why am I looking at my phone? I legitimately could just like off channel. I'm dumb as rocks, guys. The, uh, the irony is that you're coming to me for advice, and I'm I'm just dumb as rocks. Okay, Spalo, going back to your stream with SVB, is there something to be said for just focusing on heroes with high value caps? I mean, it depends on like how high your goals are. So like, I would say yes for heroes that have very low value caps. In other words. I would not recommend anybody to put a lot of effort into Bastion Symmetra, for example. Because I don't think those heroes, like, I think those heroes start to get pretty tricky and weird, like, pretty quickly. Like, right around Diamond, you know, you're going to start having issues playing those heroes. Um, but, like, a Reaper, uh, I don't know, Reaper, Hog, you know, those are relatively low on the list as well. But, like, you you could you could get the Masters pretty, pretty, not, it wouldn't be too big. Like, they're flexible enough. Zen Lucio Brigpool. Uh weird, but it could work. Like you're talking about two relatively aim reliant heroes. Yeah, it could work. Again, it just depends on it depends on like if you really like those heroes, yeah, you could make it work. Should make a whole video of similar heroes of each role. Well the problem is, is a lot of it's just opinion based of that. Like you can look at a hero's aim and general playstyle and get a pretty good ballpark estimate, but it's not a science at all. <laughs> <laughs> 